a brown bear wanders through a mountain meadow in the spring. A few hundred meters below on the plains, there is the world's fastest land mammal, the cheetah, searching for prey. These creatures are not usually found in the same country. Wild boar live in the forest clearings. There are wild ass here too. There are now few places where the rare wild ass exists at all. Only one country in the world contains this particular variety of wildlife. The country is Iran, and its great diversity of animals is due to its geographical position. Lying between Europe, Africa and the Far East, Iran has traditionally been a human crossroads. Alexander the Great conquered this mountainous country from the west. Genghis Khan swept across it from the north. But first and foremost, Iran is a crossroads of wildlife and the animals here are a curious mixture of species. It's the range of habitats that allows such variety. There are deserts and open African-style plains between the mountains. Further north are rolling steplands and deciduous forests, similar to those of northern Europe. Mountains dominate the country. Here, the winters are severe, and the wildlife is forced to migrate away from certain death in the snow. How does this strange variety of wildlife prepare for winter in Iran? A winter at the crossroads. Wildlife has always featured in Iran's culture. There was plenty of unspoiled wild country when this manuscript was painted well over 400 years ago. But since then, some of the wildlife has been seriously threatened, even destroyed. No one has seen the Persian lion, Iran's national symbol, for over 50 years. The Caspian tiger, too, is almost certainly extinct. None have been reliably reported since 1963. Tehran is the capital of Iran a country whose population has more than doubled in the last 30 years. This increased population, together with industrial expansion and years of war, has put severe pressure on much of the country's natural habitat. With much foresight, a group of conservationists, and later the Department of the Environment, set up carefully chosen national parks and reserves, so that the wildlife could prosper. The first national park was created in the mountainous region close to the Caspian, just south of the Russian border. The Transasiatic Highway snakes its way through the park. It's the only road in 800 square kilometers of protected habitat. Caspian forest reaches up the lower slopes, and above are the bare mountain peaks. These seemingly inhospitable crags are an important sanctuary for wildlife. In summer, wild mountain goats, called ibex, live on the highest and steepest cliffs. Ibex are superbly adapted to this habitat. Male ibex have the typical goat's beard and heavy horns. Later in the year, these bony growths will help determine mating privileges. Iran's rolling meadowland is sheltered between the mountains. Many of the plants are Himalayan species adapted to short summers and bitter winters. With its thick coat, the brown bear will be well insulated against the cold. Bears spend most of the summer wandering through the high meadows looking for roots and shoots, preparing for the lean months of winter ahead. 
at over 200 kilograms, the bear has a large body to keep nourished, and in the summer months, it must keep foraging. Because bear country is ideal for grazing domestic sheep and goats, in Europe, much of this habitat has literally been eaten away. But in Iran, the threat to bears is more specific. Many parts of a bear's body are used in medicine in China. Bear bile can sell at 18 times the price of gold. Outside the breeding season, the Ural sheep live in single-sex herds. The older rams form themselves into bachelor groups. Urials don't resemble domestic sheep. Alarmed, they're almost as agile as ibex. Rather than climb away from danger like the ibex, Urials prefer to run. Just two months old, this year's lambs have no difficulty keeping up with their parents as they hurtle down the steep hillsides. The Uriel's principal predators on the mountain are the leopard, very occasionally a bear, and for those which stray onto the plains, the cheetah. The cheetah is often thought of as being exclusively an African cat. This may soon be true, as it is estimated that less than 50 cheetahs still roam Iran's lowlands, their only known remaining home in Asia. Less adaptable than leopards, they need flat open spaces to make their kills. But they seem able to survive here on the uneven steppe country and in the mountain foothills, despite the winter blizzards, as long as there is sufficient prey. On the hillsides above, a black vulture watches over its single offspring. Black vultures use the same nest site from generation to generation. The parent vulture was probably raised here too. Leaving its young, the vulture goes in search of food. A cheetah kill would be ideal. They're usually in the open and easier to spot from an aerial vantage point. For three or four months, the parent vultures return to feed their offspring in the Eyrie. For such creatures, the entire year's investment lies in just one youngster. They're often the hardest hit if winter comes early. The Orphean warbler has a different strategy. It avoids the winter altogether. When the family's fledged, it'll migrate south to Africa's warmer winter environment. Tortoises must hibernate to escape the winter. These are making the most of the summer sun. But the blaze of colour in the high pastures is a passing splendour. Almost overnight, the short summer gives way to autumn. The hellebore flowers shrivel as the seeds are scattered by bitter winds. The richness vanishes swiftly from the mountain pastures. October is the only time of year when the larger rams tolerate female company. They move around in small bands looking for ewes. The ewes are only receptive for a very short period and the intense activity of the rut ensures that most of them become pregnant. The rams look for females in season and then round them up into temporary groups. The rams with the largest horns have priority. 
young males have to wait until their horns reach full size and their body weight increases. Only when two prime males are evenly matched does a real fight ensue, though it's largely a ritual. Very occasionally, a ram does get hurt and has to withdraw. By now, their winter coats are fully grown. For the rams, they not only keep out the cold, the long white beard serves as a potent display to both rivals and mates during the two weeks of the rutting season. Ewes don't have manes, and their horns are thinner and shorter than a ram's. In the autumn rut, they can expect to be chased relentlessly. The mountains are home to another big cat. The leopard still survives in more remote parts of Iran, where it preys on the herds of wild sheep and goats. Iran has the world's heaviest race of leopard. Individuals can weigh up to a hundred kilograms. Their fur is more sandy colored than their African relatives to blend in with their mountain surroundings. As a result, they're sometimes mistaken for snow leopards, a species that lives much further to the east. In late autumn, ibex forage further afield, away from their cliff sanctuaries. Their diet is mainly juniper leaves now. They even climb trees to reach them. draws on, mist enshrouds the land. It rolls over the slopes, reducing visibility to almost zero. For the ibex and urial sheep, this may be the last time they can feed here before the elements force them downhill into the valleys. The change in weather forewarns that the snows are imminent as the winds veer towards the north. On brighter mornings, there's often a sea of low cloud over the valleys. Black-throated thrushes move on when their food is frozen. Their arrival from Russia means that the steplands there are already under snow. Juniper berries dislodged by the ibex provide a nourishing meal. Below, the maples and hornbeams in the park are taking on the golden hues of autumn. Just 40 years ago, these forests were inhabited by woodcutters, opium poppy growers and shepherds. Once a glade was cleared, it was suitable for grazing. This way, much of the forest was lost each year and the wild inhabitants forced out. 
Now this area has been set aside for wildlife and the forest is beginning to return to its original state. Wild boar are some of the oldest forest inhabitants. Until now, the boar have been widely dispersed, but as the first snows powder the hills above, they return to the shelter of the forest. In the past, there might have been a tiger waiting for them. Now, their main predator is the leopard. In the forest clearings, the light snow has melted in the morning sun. Chukar partridges are more at home on the open hillsides above than in these clearings, but down here they're sheltered from the icy winds. Winter has come to Asia. The high pastures are covered, so the mountain wildlife will have to battle through the freezing drifts to clear ground below. Downhill migration is vital to avoid the twin blights of starvation and cold. The annual trial of fitness has begun, for only in the shelter of the valleys is it possible to find sustenance. That means all the grazers will have to compete for the same food in the same small areas. Birds are similarly affected by the arrival of snow. Magpies are among the most hardy and adaptable of birds. They have an omnivorous diet and will eat almost anything they find which is edible. But in winter, the pickings are slim. Much of the magpie's usual diet isn't available. These opportunistic birds have found that Uriel sheep provide a useful alternative supply of food. In Asia, magpies act rather like the tick birds of Africa. For them, the insects are an easy source of food. For the sheep, it means the removal of parasites that might be the difference between life and death. After the rut, Uriel rams have reached the limits of exhaustion. Maintaining a harem of females for a fortnight is tiring work, and they feed very little during this time for fear of losing them. An early fall of snow may prove fatal. The flocks take temporary refuge in a gully, reaching up to browse in the trees. so the search continues for snow-free valleys. For one creature, winter doesn't mean eviction from its mountain home. On warmer days, this Persian jerd, a kind of gerbil, ventures out from hibernation. Forays above ground must always be cautious ones. There are still predators in the area. Foxes are the jerd's main enemy. Though there's also a chance of attack by an eagle, hunting for food during the daytime is a necessity during the winter.
After a freezing cold night, the ibex make their way down from the drifts into the valleys. The herds are closely knit. The stocky male ibex have black stripes across their shoulders, the mark of fully adult males. During their descent, the snow gets thinner and they nibble at anything edible. For the young, these forced marches are particularly hard. If they get separated from their mothers, they may find themselves abandoned. Each kid can identify its own mother's bleat and keeps close to her. It's been reported that ibex can live on mountains as high as 4,500 metres in Iran. But in winter, there's no food to be had in the snowdrifts so high up on the mountain slopes. Rutting time for the ibex coincides with the first snowfall. The mountains of Iran cover vast areas, but in winter, the wildlife is confined to a miniature enclave of valleys. This is the most dangerous time of year, and it is now that the park must be carefully managed. Poaching is easier with the game in restricted localities, so the rangers must watch over the winter sanctuaries. From now until spring, there will be many casualties for the vultures to pick clean. It's all part of the natural hardship that Iran's strange mixture of animals has to face during a winter spent at this wildlife crossroads. generations are going to look back at this time in history and call these the crazy years, the mad years, the time when the human species, with full knowledge of its action, went through the bounty and diversity of life on this planet. One American baby uses as much as 125 Indian babies. We are skimming the world dead at the rate of one hectare a second, and it's got to stop. Otherwise, the whole world goes to hell in a handcart. The last show on Earth, part of Wild on Five, Sunday at 5.